Okay, I have started recording. Okay. Now, we have done this particular test case last week. So what we did, like, as you can see, we have discussed about uh, two test cases. Uh, these two test cases are um, one of the test cases where regarding uh, you go there and um, you verify you go there and um, click on login input and billet credential verify the error message one of the test case was this right test case two was you go to open salesforce you click on login link you verify logo and in the right hand side there is a portion of the application in the right hand side right verify that start your free trial text is present right if you if you open this website you open this website so you come here you click on login the first test case was verify logo input username input password click on login verify the error message the second test case you come up to this you verify logo and then you verify this text after the verification you click on that to start my free trial and make sure that when you, you are able to click on this and after clicking on this you make sure that your case appears okay so that was the requirement okay now let me go back so the first test case we did right if I execute it so we have brought test engine. We have created our test case here. We have before method. We have after method. What does before method does? Basically, the before method. Can you see this is a method in our test engine class? Which is our test engine class? This class is our test engine class. In our test engine class, this is a this is a method right this is a method what we are asking before executing this test method execute this method so if when you say before method this before method will be executed before each of the test method and what will happen here it will be it will be calling from the method class from the my method class we have created this object and by this object we are calling this before test right in the before method now when you call this before test what will happen if you click on control and if you click on this it will take you there in the before test what we have we have system dot set property basically we are creating an object of the chrome driver and we are opening a browser so what does this mean? This means before, before every test, before every test, the before method will be executed. It will open the browser and it will be opening the website. And in the website, then you do your stuff, right? Your stuff means you click on login link, right? You do whatever your test case requires. Now, and then we have a after method. We have a after method. So after method, what will happen every time you execute this uh, test method? After the test method, whatever you have here, it will be executed. Let's say if you put system dot out one second system dot out dot println right you type here let's say my test case 
is executed. What is that? The correction, the spelling. Y N Y. Oh yeah. Thank you. So my test case is executed. Now you put a message here. Okay. Uh, this is you put a you put this here. You say my test case execution execution is started okay okay now let me execute this particular we have done one test case let me execute this The error messages and then let's go back to our log if you come to the output screen if you come to the console then you will see the output messages can you see here we have test run one and failure one right we'll take a look what is that failure but if you take a look here it will it will tell more about the failures right it was right assertion right we failed in the assertion can you see can you see uh, has been disabled by your uh, so can you see your access to salesforce.com expected was my expectation was your access to salesforce.com has been disabled by your system manager my expectation was this uh, your access to salesforce.com has been disabled by your system manager please contact your system administrator for information but in the page what we got in the page we got your access to salesforce.com has been disabled by your system administrator but what was my expectation guys my expectation was system manager so that's why the text didn't match so that's why my test case failed that's why my test case failed now if you take a look here my execution has started can you see this my execution has started so before method before it has started the browser can you see can you see this message executed and after that it called the before test method and in the before test method in the before test method what happened we called browser and we did stuff right now if you come back if you scroll down to the bottom of the log right here my execution my test case is executed can you see here when my when my um when my test case is done right my test case is executed and we got the failed we have the test case failed and it is showing the reason of the failure so you can see like before the execution it was able to display this message and after the execution it was able to display this message because it is after method okay and 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 what and we have um we have uh, all of the other thing now if you take a look here if you take a look here can you see you will see that i have two test cases i have one test case here and i see that it is passed or failed all of the details are here this is the test uh, ng details okay now so here in this particular case right normally instead of before method we put before test instead of after method we put after so what will happen can you see this see this at test annotation now before before uh, hold on oh 
line number 25 uh hold on i'll be answering your question line number 25 so here instead of before method we put before test instead of after method we put after test okay now line number now before test we have to import uh, corresponding uh, imports for before test and after test now line number 25 what is the uh, question nipa from you what is it doing like okay so what is it doing can you see this before test annotation like as you can see here this at test annotation you can see here that before test annotation and you can see that after test annotation right so at test means this is your test case can you see before line number 15 we have a at test annotation is that correct so this is a test case and before every test case if you have a before test method whatever you have after before test it will be executed before every test case so but amra other main class ta the amra je protom class dekhchilam eta public static arch string to mane pura return statement ta dei mhm amra main test ta dekhtam bhai main return statement ta dei na mhm so when you have test ng class remember we have created this class as a test ng class Right. When you have test ng class, you do not have to use that public static void name. Test ng class will automatically take care of that. When you do not use test ng, then you will have to use public static void main because if you do not have a public uh, main main method, your execution basically in Java in Java programming, your execution starts from main method. So that's why you have to have a main method. But if you use test ng then we do not have to give a main method. Test ng class doesn't need a main method because we have this annotations. By the annotations, it take care of the test cases. Was I able to answer your question, Naid Bhai? Test ng class, where we have test ng class, our execution will be started from at test annotation and be like however many at test annotation when you click on replay button your execution will automatically start from this at test annotations the pattern is served in the, in, in another way here it the mechanism is here in the test ng class so that you do not have to write the main method What my question was, why didn't we have to create another object for after test method like we did in line number 27? Right, right. So, so that is what I'm trying to explain, right? So, let's say you have 100 test cases, right? Then you have like 100 at test annotation. Is that correct? If, if you have 100 test cases? Okay. Now, can you see? Can you see here? Click on login link. That means we are clicking on login link. So if, if you want to click on login link, if the requirement is you have to open the browser first, right? Now, where did I open the browser? Right? Can you see I have opened the browser? Can you see in the before method? I have a, met I have a method here before test. And I have opened the browser here. Now, why, why I am doing this? Now, why I am, I can open the browser here, right? I can write a method here to open the browser. Is that correct? But why I have written it in the before, before test annotation? Why? Who can answer this? If we work like three people working different project, and you give us the project, like let's try finish of test case and impact this channel like the next channel so we don't need to write down open browser again and again so we just write, uh, just write down one uh, method 
opening the browser with more methods, then next gradually we can uh, execute the test case after the uh, after the method. We don't need to write down and again and again open the browser. It's like the framework of uh, the project. Kind of, kind of. So if you take a look here, guys. So I am talking about one hundred test cases, one hundred at test impressions, right? Now, in if you do not open the browser in the before test method, you have to open the browser in 100 places in 100 test cases. Is that correct? 100 test cases, each of which will have a method here. But it is, you do not have to do that because you have a before test annotation. And before test annotation, annotation will, every time a test case will be executed, it will be automatically executed and it will be automatically opening the browser for you and it will automatically open the browser for you and from there from there you will be able to move you got it nipa and why this after test now let's say after every test case you have to close the browser so what you do here Close browser so that before it starts another test case, the browser is closed. You got it? Now, Nipa, can you explain like what you have learned from this, like from this discussion? Um, it's more like uh, sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, it's because um, we're doing too much if we keep writing the same method over and over again in each of our test cases. So if you have the um, test object created with the before test method, you don't have to um, build every single test case on each other. You won't have to keep, you know, keep writing the code over and over again. Right. So that, that before test will be automatically executed before every test case and after test will be automatically executed after each test, okay? So here, any further question on this, guys? Okay, very good. So now this particular, this particular section, it, it worked. We do not have any question. We have all of the methods we have written here, right? For, for interacting with different objects. Now, now, let's see, guys, let's see, the next objective here is to verify this text. Next, next test case. So let me bring the next test here. Uh, so if I want to write another test case, what I'll have to do, I'll have to create another test method. I'm copying this and then I'm going to put it here and it will be my test case 2 it will be my test case 2 in test case 2 as well I'll have to click on login link I'll have to verify logo and after that I'll have to do some other thing I do not have to do this right now this particular test case I'm going to disable Enabled equal to right, and it will not be executed. Only this one will be executed. I don't want to spend time on this now. Let me execute this. Let me close this browser. Let me run it. So it is clicking on login. It has verified the logo. The next thing, guys, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to verify this, right? So let me inspect this object. Okay. Now, 
here it seems uh, the page the whole page is not here let me just uh, okay so remember remember we did something we did like um, okay we'll come back to that now if I want to verify this object right can you see start your free trial this text it is pointing me out there right can you can everyone see this okay now the, what is the what is the tag for this particular object span okay span and then it has a it has a class header text right it has a class uh, what attribute does this span has What are the attributes that 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 pen has available? Like, what are the pen, uh, attributes? What attributes? I have a okay. You have been. This is a. Span. This is that. Class is the attribute name, and what is the attribute value name? Value. No, another. See, this is this is the tag. Class is the name of the attribute, and this is the value. Header text is the value for the attribute. And if you can see, right, if you can see, guys, that header text is in the next line. And after the header text, it has a lot of spaces. Is that correct? And can you see that start your free trial? That start your free trial again, if you take a look, it has spaces in it. Is that correct? Your free trial has spaces so here if you take a look guys this class header text right class equal to header text again this is confusing because it has a space here it has a spaces in this area right so i'm kind of confused here in terms of what i'm going to use to identify that object so my fair guess here will be start your free trial can you see this text this text is again it has space so we cannot directly say okay text equal to this we cannot directly say text equal to this we have to use regular expression here is that correct how do you use regular expression you have to use contents is that correct you have to use contents okay now let me write a syntax let me copy this. You can use partial link, brother, when it is link. It is not a link, right? This is a span. Can you see? Is that correct, right? Partial text. Partial text uh, span doesn't have a partial text attribute. Link only has partial text. Partial link text, okay? So here we have to use text attribute and we have to use contents. Okay. Now let me let me go there. Let me go to my method class. And I'm going to write a method. Here. Okay. Public void. Right, public void verify header text from from second pane second pane of the screen. Okay, okay. the spelling will be P A N. Okay, so here you can give any name, right? 
here uh, now before i go what does this void means can anyone help me understanding this void return type of the method what does void mean void type return what navet can you tell me like what will happen if we use void do i have a return value from this method void means i am not returning anything from this method okay now so let's say we are going to first of all we are going to highlight that object so i'm going to use that hlp obj dot highlighter right highlighter and my web driver what is my web driver guys my and I'm going to write a X path for this element. Oh yeah, yeah, you are right. You are right. My bad. Okay, and then here you write here um, my wd dot find element by element by dot what by dot x by dot x path and then you come here by dot x path you put your double quote here and then what is your you put your forward slashes and then what is the name of your tag right and then you put your box bracket and since it will be a regular expression we will have to put contains right and then you have to use Is it going taking out? Uh, contents now before contents you do not have to write at the end. Contents remember this before contents you do not have to do that. Hmm? Yeah, only attribute before attribute you put. If you if you are using the attribute, then you use at the rate before attribute name. Like can you see ID? We put attribute at the rate. Can you see type? We use at, at the rate, right? When you are when you are using attribute name, then you put this at the rate side. Now, so we have contents. Now inside the contents, how we are planning to identify that object by text. Is that correct? So okay text again text doesn't have at the rate sign so we put text and then comma since since contents means it is not equal text is we do not know the exact text we know okay partial text so it will be a comma instead of equal it will be comma and then put your single quotation you put your text here now who has question So that, that's why Nabed, if you take a look here, we have a we have a spaces here, and I'm we have a spaces line break. We do not know how you can put a spaces line break. So that's why I put contents. Put the exact text, then I will put text equal to. But here I didn't put text equal to. Can you see I I have used contents and text comma. I'm using regular expression. spaces so that's why we didn't go we didn't use header at all we are we are trying to identify that object by text attribute and by regular expression we do not know that text so that's why we are using contents does it make sense guys? okay now so let me call this method from our main class so here M T H O B J dot O M T H D. There is a D, right? H D dot. Um, what is that um, method that we have written? This, right? 
now let me let me execute this let me close this this browser i do not need it let me execute this okay i'm here it was not able to highlight this element right so if you go there can you see we have we have error message here if you scroll up you will be able to see error message can you see element info start your free trial right using xpath right can you see we have written this xpath value equal to this and I am not able to identify that object it is complaining no such element so it is not saying your syntax is invalid or your code is not correct it is saying we haven't got this object right whatever description you have written we are not able to identify that object by that description that means nothing wrong with my syntax nothing wrong with my syntax syntax is fine but it is not able to identify the object by this description okay okay so that is the problem that nipa you are facing right okay hold on now let's say okay now if you take a look here if you take a look here in this particular section right can you see let's say if you in the blank space if you inspect you in the blank space if you inspect can you see deep id left and when you say deep id left when you say deep id left where does it points when you say deep deep ID left, the left the left whole screen is that correct the whole screen it points okay what is the tag name here deep what is the attribute name id what is the attribute value left left okay now let me go to our code let me write another thing here um Okay, I'm going to uh, my web driver, my wd dot find element by dot xpath, xpath, right? And then double quote, and then forward slash. And what is the tag name for the div? Div, right? And then box bracket. I know at id equal to left left and then right okay now if you execute it one more time can you see it was able to highlight the left part of the screen right now but after that it was not able to do anything here so the problem is still it is not able to identify this so since in this particular screen i have a div with id left i for sure have another div with id right so let's say if you put right here and if you execute it can you see it is able to identify the right side pane as well is that correct side i am able to identify right side i am able to identify in the left side i am able to go inside and 
handle the sales force. Is that correct? I am able to highlight the sales force. Is that correct? But in the right, I cannot go inside and highlight this one. That is the problem statement. Is it the right problem statement, guys? Nahid bhai? Nahid bhai? But we are not able to what about, what about that, uh, wait, the If I can identify that, if I can highlight that start your free trial, I'll be able to handle handle that start my free trial link as well. But for now, I'm not able to identify anything from the right side. If I can identify one object, I can identify the whole object. But I'm not even able to go inside that, uh, inside that. Is, is it the problem statement? Is there any suggestion that you can provide, guys, to help me? Defect or we can we uh, like? Do you think it is automatable or it is not automatable? Yeah, How? What is that? That is what I'm trying to get a suggestion from you. What? What? Uh, Let me see. Uh, Let me inspect it. Give me a suggestion uh, because I am stuck here. I need your help. You tried all of the objects and it didn't work at all, right? We have highlighted right side of the face, but we cannot go inside inside that right side. It is it is clickable. It is clickable, but by tool we cannot we cannot highlight. We cannot interact with it. Let me go to that particular page um, here. So if you right click, inspect, yep, this is the, this is what we have. It is a span again, and it has, again, we'll have to use regular expression because it has a span. What is that? Well, this is not what you are trying. We are trying to interact with this. Yeah, we have highlighted this particular stuff, right? Can you see? This link we are trying to interact with. Oh. 
this is a a and it has like in in terms of can you see that a started here that a ended here so we can say by partial text because with text it has some other things so we can say by partial link text and we copy this link text let me copy this link text it will be partial because it has with the text it has some other things is that correct okay so you go there in your code and here before you go there even you you try to do it here uh, h l p o b j dot highlighter dot h l p o b j h p o b j dot uh, highlighter and then my web driver is my wd dot and then comma uh, my wd dot find element by dot partial link text right for the link we have partial link text now what is the partial link text that we know this dot my feedback okay now let me execute it one more time Okay, now go there. Let me run it one more time. Save it. Run it one more time. Okay, so here again it was not able to highlight this. As you go there, you will see that now it will be failing on this particular thing. Can you see no such element method partial link text selector start my free trial no such element it is not complaining about our syntax it is saying that no such element so what is the problem guys can anyone help or uh, what what is your decision can we automate it or we cannot automate it What is that? We can automate it, Nipra. We can. Okay, so before we now let me say this before we decide about an object, whether we can automate it or we cannot automate it, we have to we do a lot of investigation. We do a lot of analysis, right? And then if we cannot handle that objects, in some cases, we reach out to the developers. Say, can you help us? Why this object, we cannot handle it? Because they know how they have built the application, right? So if I want to, like before I decide about it, I would do a deeper analysis. So if I start keep looking, right? If I start, can you see? Uh, this is the link and then this is the div right and if you go one step up this is the another div this is another div this is another div can you see each of the element for each of the element can you see the objects right everyone follow me what i'm doing like this is how you debug can you see this is the online training live onboarding web webinars right and then can you see guided experience can you see right and then can you see pre-configured process and can you see preloaded data and then can you see no credit card required right guys okay now keep going up and then can you see start your free trial is that correct up to this so let's see what we have up there you keep going up Okay, can you see there is a h1 here start your free trial right and then can you see there is a div for the top part of the screen and can you see there is a 
deep class for something and if you let's keep going up can you see there is a deep here for that half of the screen guys can you see this up to what i'm doing let's keep going up to see like what is the root cause of the issue okay this is the whole thing now now let's so this is the whole thing this is the whole this is something that is hidden in the page this is something that is hidden in the page this is something that is hidden in the page this is the whole thing still we are in this pane code if you take a look code wise we are still in this right side of the screen and here we are here here we are here here head can you see that when you see body that means can you see html tag that means a full html started here a full html that is your starting point of this particular section when you see html head body that means the page has started from here and then if you go a little bit up if you go a little bit up right keep going up can you see deep id right okay did id right so we have a, a div in the left side and we have a div in the right side we we can we can highlight up to this div id right is that correct but here is the problem can you see there is a iframe here can you see this iframe we from this inside that iframe another html instant another html board another html instance has started inside that iframe so that means can you see html body html if you go up you will see another html body head can you see so that means the whole thing inside the html inside the html there is a iframe and inside the iframe another html instance have started is that correct okay now when you see iframe when you see iframe remember that is the problem that is why we are not able to you have to first do something to go into the iframe and then you will be able to buy the objects so how do you go inside the iframe first of all you will have to do that before you do anything inside that iframe so you have to switch to that iframe before you handle anything so let's go back to our code and here i know that deep id left deep id right we are good up to that and after that after the deep we have what iframe after that deep we have iframe so we have to switch to that iframe before we handle any object inside that iframe how do you switch so you say by web driver dot right can you see there is a um uh, my web driver dot dot switch to can you see this switch to and then dot frame can you see frame you take this and then argument let's go back to our page and for that iframe for that iframe we have a id marketing we have a name marketing right so you can use any of this id or name you can copy this and you come here you put that marketing and you put your semicolon now let's do another execution
for some reason our phase is slow slow here our execution might be failing here but depending on is it still going on let me close this let me execute it one more time Can you see if you can uh, access that website if you are having any delay? Okay, the connection is interrupted for some reason. Are you able to go to that, visit that page? Guys. That's why, let me just, uh, I have disabled recording as well. Let me execute this one more time. Uh, have I started sharing my screen? Yeah. Let me share my screen again. Nahid Bhai uh, and Nabed, are you still in the call? Okay, okay, very good. I'm, I'm, uh, can you see my screen? Okay, I have started the execution again. Now, um, let's see, uh, probably we have failed again. Let me see what uh, frame, my web driver dot switch to frame marketing. Let me see what is the error message now. Uh, no such element, partial link. Okay, uh, partial link. It is saying the unable to locate element, partial link, selector my. Uh, partial link text select or start my free trial so it is complaining let me just uh, comment out this part and see that if it is able to highlight the other part i'm going to close my um, browser here and close this one here let me execute this one more time Okay, now what um, it is failed again. Let me see. Span contains text. This it is still not able to highlight. 
the switch to frame marketing no, okay give me a second So that uh, frame, right? Let me take a look a uh, few other thing. If I go back to this particular screen here, it is not complaining about that frame, right? Uh, switching to that frame. In switching part, it is a frame and then ID marketing name marketing title marketing frame marketing and then start my free trial and let me see so this particular object if I inspect this particular object inspect so scan and then start your free trial inspect contents okay if I go there span contents text start your free trial let me just remove that dot and marketing frame marketing my brother dot switch to and frame and marketing so let me do another execution here save Okay. okay so now it is able to it is able to identify that object right as can you see now it is able to identify that object here start my start your free trial. okay now let's mm -hmm, go ahead it will do if you if you have used that that particular uh, my web driver switch to frame now you can share you can share let me take a look frame and the frame is uh, the id of the frame is marketing put that id there so do not change anything in your syntax go there my web driver switch to frame marketing and span contains text start my free i uh, start your free trial okay now execute it okay let's take a look what is the error message that we are getting up there Okay, go up in the error messages can you see no such window right can you see um, no such window exception if you and then can you see in the left hand side uh, okay. uh, no such it is complaining about no such window if you go there marketing right marketing uh, frame marketing okay let me see like in particular line which particular line it is complaining okay 
Now, if you scroll down to your log, you will see that your can you see which line it is complaining? Right yeah, click on 77. Cl no, no, click on that. Uh, remote. This is, no, no, not. This is test. In your method, in your go up. No, no, no. In the log. So from the log, you will see it will complaining about a line in your code. Go up slowly. Test method worker. What is your what is your class name? What is your class name? Salesforce method. What is your class name? Uh, method CLS, right? It will complain about that. Can you find out that particular line where it is complaining about your particular line number? Scroll down. Can you see Salesforce method line number 63 CLS? Yes. Yeah, click on that. Yeah, click here. Okay, the problem is in this as uh, in this span. Your uh, 62 is fine. Let me see like find element by dot x path and then you have a span and you have contains and then you have text and then a comma start your free trial right uh, and then you have your closing text and then you can start your free trial start your uh, highlighted so you have switched to uh, okay okay so what do you do can you see line number 59 copy that and after the switch to statement after the line after line number 62 put it here okay wait there start your free trial this start your free trial if you go there if you go to the screen let me see if your cases are okay uh, if you no go to the, go to the application Go to the website basically website and start your free trial right um, can you make this can you see like on the right hand side can you close it the, uh, yeah close that close that okay and make the screen bigger maximize it okay now uh, now inspect one more time Now this is a span, the span is that my free trial. Mm, you can close it, take a look. Now start your free trial and make, start, can you see that text? Can you copy the text from here? Double click, double click again inside. Let's um, yeah, copy this and go there and put it. Okay, now you try one more time. Okay, let's do this. Let me see. Can you inspect on that? Can you see uh, this one? Yeah, inspect that. Inspect that. One more time, go there. Make, yeah, inspect that. Actually, what you have to do, you have to make this screen bigger. Make the, yeah, make, make it bigger. And then inspect it. 
what you have to do can you the left side make it smaller the, actually the coat part make it bigger uh, make it smaller yeah no 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 yeah now now you inspect it yeah inspect it so here if you put your cursor start your free trial right in the right hand side if you put your cursor right uh, this is the span and start your free trial if you double click and copy from there again you copy from there the text yeah uh, can you see if you go down a little bit no 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 go go up go up go down in the like if you put your cursor you see where it highlights right the text here yeah 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 double click on that and then copy it copy mm -hmm. copy and then go to so this is a span right this is a span and if you go there in your code this is a span contains text so remove that dot at the end okay now you do now you execute one more time okay let me see uh, if you let's do this uh, if you go to your code again let me see what is the error message now we are seeing you can go up let me see like the original error message first of all it is complaining no such window right work dot selenium no such window exception no such window and then it is complaining about uh, it is also complaining about element info using xpath span span hold on hold on here span contains give me one second i'm looking at something contains text and then you have contains text comma start your free trial and then you have your box bracket and okay go to that uh, code again okay you have your my web driver dot switch to dot frame and then you have your marketing marketing and then timeouts my web driver my web driver dot my web and element by the expert okay so let's put a okay the frame if you go to that frame can you see like what attribute you see in your screen like in the application website if you scroll up uh -huh. add count go a little bit up oh and then you have to you are all the way up you have to go yeah frame right this is the frame by the right and then you see the frame and then can you see name id is marketing name is marketing there is a title called marketing okay marketing can you copy this text from here id the id one mm -hmm. copy this and double click and select this and put it there
Okay, hold on here. Driver, my web driver, uh, my web driver switch to, and then you are going to verify start my free channel. Okay, and then my email is other. You are putting another time. Okay, wait. And find the email. Okay, now execute one more time. Close the browsers, whatever browsers you have opened, close all of them. it is highlighting that part and it is not highlighting okay let's do this um, um can you write that code deep right the deep id can you highlight try to highlight the right side deep you have to uh, make that uh, code screen a little bit smaller yeah, deep ID. Can you see deep, deep, deep? Yeah, I see. I see that deep. Deep ID. Can you see? Yeah, deep ID, right? Can you try to highlight the deep after the uh, switch window, right? I, can you go to your code? Mm -hmm. And over there, over there, uh, after line number, after line number 63, after line number 63, you create a new line, basically. Remove the content, it will be a div and remove the content. Remove parenthesis for content. This remove remove the parenthesis for contents. And you have another parenthesis before the box bracket ending. I have to put the box bracket right yeah and then id at id at the rate id you will have to use at the rate and remove the parenthesis after id right after id you do not need id equal equal to instead of comma it will be equal to remove the comma and then put right okay okay now if you uh, do another execution i want to see if it is if our switch to is okay now let's do another execution by closing the browser So here, even we are not able to reach to that. Okay, let's see what is the error message we have received at the moment. No such window exception. Uh, no such window exception. And then deep ID using, uh, it was not able to go a little bit up. Uh, hold on here hold on here uh, element info using expert value deep at id right hmm. no such window okay let's do this can you copy line number 64 and put it before the switch to before line number 62 not cut keep it there 
Okay, that's fine. Yeah, just copy and put this line before line number 62. Yeah, before 62. Yeah, put that line before 62. Okay, execute it one more time. Okay, now it is, so the problem is, the problem is in the, it seems like the problem is in the frame, like what you are using over there. Okay, so the line is working, but it is stacking in the frame. It is not able to switch to. Let's go there in the code. Let's, let me take a look your switch to, uh, you have written switch to and then frame and then you have put let me take a look the way i have written it one second my web driver switch to frame marketing and after that it was able to do that okay all right so can you remove this line number 63 Actually, comment out, comment out, control question mark. Yeah, and then create a new line after that and write the code. Uh, my dot switch to. You know, double click on that, yeah. And then dot frame. Uh, here a string yeah that is the problem probably string and put that string Dub, uh, double quote and copy that marketing and put that marketing there and then go to your semicolon at the end and execute it one more time It should work now. Okay, let, let me see. Uh, let me see if you go back to your code. Let me see if there is a failure now. So now what is the, why is the failure? Uh, is it complaining about no search window? Still it is complaining about no search window. Okay, hold on here, using expert value did right. Okay, now let's go back switch to frame marketing switch to frame marketing okay uh, div id switch to frame marketing okay press enter in that line and uh, again write it my web driver dot dot switch to mm -hmm. dot no switch to uh, remove that frame let me see one thing uh, remove that up to frame remove everything just put, keep switch to uh, remove the dot and then put dot hold on here hold on here frame int argument frame string argument frame web element argument right string argument okay so can you see that for that particular frame we have three things can you see there is something in the middle something in the middle string argument string argument, yeah put that put that and then you put your string marketing code and then you do another execution
Now let's take a look if it failed again. Okay, now what? Again, uh, no such window, right? No such window. Okay, so give me a second. Let me take a look what I have used in my one. such can you try uh, to switch frame can you see if it works for you You are not able to. Yeah, one second. I'll do, I'll, I'm putting that that one there. Give me a second. So, then. Again, it complain in my case as well. This time with the same code, right? It did. Uh, it, it was not able to. Okay, one second. Let me put something here.
Jesus. I'm getting back guys give me a few moments i'm preventing a few things here okay i think i got like what the issue is let me verify one more time and then i'm coming back I got it. So let me come back to your screen, Nipa. The problem is the timing. The problem is the timing. Can you see that you have used implicitly weight, right? That that for some reason that implicit weight doesn't work for some reason. It's not working. So let's say that. And the, when you are trying to switch to a frame, that is where the frame is taking time to load. Remember, as I said, the frame, it is a totally different HTML instance. And it, it is taking time to load. And can you see, although um, you have put it, it will not work. So let's say that the frame, that the frame, you, you the frame is taking a, uh, you know so the frame like you have to wait five seconds or two seconds at least before you try to switch to that frame so put it here but the, can you see timeout simplicity run it one more time still it will fail i'll tell you why it why still it will fail yeah run it one more time Okay, now still it will fail. If you go there, you will see that your code is failed one more time. So go there. And can you see no such window still? Because this implicitly weight, this implicit, remember, this implicitly weight is a problematic statement and this lot of reason, in lot of time it doesn't work. So comment out that implicitly weight. In, in this particular instance, we have to use another, either a dynamic weight, right, a dynamic weight, or we have to use thread.slip, put thread.slip. Yeah, thread.slip, and put your millisecond, let's say 5000 milliseconds.
okay and then yeah um can you see there is a do you see any error yeah throw exception right yeah click on here and throw exception yep double click yeah add throws and then yeah and is the uh, like try to execute it one more time here wait cancel here as well you will have to double click and throws exception mm -hmm. now you run it after that One, two, three, four, five. Uh, can you see if your execution is stopped or uh, yeah, I think it failed again. Let's take a look. Go there. So now let's take a look. What is the error message we are getting? Now, no such element, right? No such element. Uh, if you take now the problem is a different thing, right? Now the problem is not no such window. Is that correct? Now let's take a look. What is the problem? You go there. Go there. You go to your method. Uh, hold on here. Uh, my web driver div at id equal to div at id equal to write no such element. Right screen, it has highlighted, right? Yeah. Okay, 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 one second. So uh, the problem here, now you have, uh, remember, now we, you have switched to the frame, is that correct? In that frame, do you have a div with ID, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. The div is before frame. Remember, in the right hand side, you have, first you have the div that has ID, right? Inside that div, you have a frame. Is that correct? Inside that frame, do you have another div that has ID, right? No. If you look at the phase architecture, go there in the phase architecture. Right? Can you see? Frame. First of all, look at the frame is inside the, inside the div. Can you see if you go one step up, the the div is the div id left and the next one is div id right it is it is the parent of the frame but inside the frame do you have a div id right no you do not so that's why now i understand the problem go there now can you see the 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 code you have written to free trial bring that code free trial and remove the div id frame remove that now you execute Now you execute. I'll keep my finger crossed this time it will work. One, two, three, four, five. Right? And then it was able to click on the link as well. Is it, does it make sense to all of you at this point? Who, who has question up to this? Who has question guys? Can you see now you are able to, um, can you see, uh, you are able to, the, the logo, which logo? Mm -hmm. this logo right I the, mean this one right here so this is another case guys 
uh, if you want to like can you see can you see when you look at me talk, talk to me when you have clicked on that link it has opened another browser window is that correct now you have to switch to that browser window before you do anything no 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 uh, there is another way of switching to another window now you cannot the problem here is when you like if you go back to the browser go back to the browser can you see it, it has opened another browser instance you have in the left hand side if you look at all the way up it has opened another browser instance in the in the left hand side you have the, your original browser in the left hand side click the browser tab in the left hand side this is the original browser but when you clicked on that start my free trial it opened close that close that start my free trial window and click on that link one more time can you see it is opening another browser instance if you, have, if you have a situation like that you have to switch to that browser instance how do you switch right let me show you how do you switch to that browser instance okay uh, let 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 me bring you in my page again okay it will it will be it will be closing one window it will not be closing uh, you will see like um, execute it one more time mm -hmm. It has, if you have noticed, it has closed the original window, but it was not able to close this one. Remember, there are two tabs. It has closed the original tab, but it, it didn't close this tab because, you got it? Yeah. Because, as I said, it is opening all, all of this. It has opened a different window where you do not have control. It was able to close the original window, but it didn't close the extended window that was open when you have clicked on that start my free trial. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, now let me show you how you can switch to that window so that you can work out there. Let me take, uh, let me start share. Guys, up to this, do you have any question? Nahid Bhai, Nabed, do you have any question? Nahid bhai? Can you hear me, Nahid bhai? Nahid bhai, are you there in the call? Seems he has dropped off. Okay. So, um, let me bring this. Let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Can you see my screen? Okay. So here, now I am able to switch to, and then I am able to, um, I am able to highlight that. The next thing that I am going to do is I am going to click on that link. So to click on that link, let me do a respect on this. Let me make it bigger. Let me make this particular part of the screen okay now let me inspect, if i inspect this if i inspect this you can see that you can see that guys you can see that up to this start my free trial right start my free trial up to this again this is a link and this is a partial link text. Can you see after the greater than sign, less than sign, in between, it is a link and it has a free uh, start my free trial. Or it is a, if you do not want to go to a span, if you do not want to go up to link, if you just look at what we have around that start my free trial, it is a span. 
I'll be identifying that one by span. First of all, I'll try by span. Now you come here. So uh, you have verified, you have verified the text, right? Now you create another method here. You create another method here. Um, public void, public void, and your method will be um, uh, click on, click on start. Right, and then here HLT OBJ dot highlighter highlighter right, and then your web driver, and then here you say my web driver dot find element right by dot xpath xpath right and then in our xpath what is the name of that object span tag right and then you in your box bracket if you take a look here start my free trial right you can see start my free trial and span has a start my free trial so first first let me Yeah, li link text is easier in this case. If you want, I can use my use link text. It will be partial link text because it has some other thing with the link text. Does it make sense? So let me try to identify that object by partial link text. So instead of uh, by dot x path, let me put by dot partial link text. And what is the partial link text? Let me put that partial link text here. Okay, now let me call this method from the main method. Just case two. So empty hd obj dot this, right? Now let me just I'm highlighting. If my highlighting is good, then I'll be clicking on it. Let me execute time. Okay, and then it seems like it was not able to highlight that. Let me see what is the problem, what is the error message I get here. So it is complaining about um, what? No such element. Method partial link text, start my free trial. It is complaining about no such element. So if it is if, if it complains like this, then in this case, I will be going to the other method. Instead of, I will be putting, instead of by dot link text, partial link text, I will be putting here, find element by dot xpath, xpath, and in the xpath, I will be putting, um, is span and then it will be span and then there will be um, box bracket span there will be box bracket and inside the box bracket there will be contains contains and then contains will be coming with this this and inside the contains I'll be putting text then this is, and then here I'll be putting single quotation. I'll be putting oh, what is that? Um, okay, this is the and 
let me go there and put it here in my code yep let me do another execution Okay, now it was able to highlight it. Can you guys see? Okay, so the like we have to try different ways of identifying object because one way will not work. We have to go for another way. Now I want to click on that particular object. So if I want to click on that particular object, what I will do? Dot. I'll be putting dot. Now if you execute one more time, now it has clicked. Now the problem here, it has opened another window. Now let's say that you want to make sure that we, uh, first of all, you want to make sure that your page is loaded by, let's say, right click, inspect, right? And then let's make it bigger. Guys, are you guys okay? Like, I'm taking a little bit more time today. Okay, all right. So, here, can you see? Let's say we want to verify this particular element by highlighting it to make sure that the page is loaded again this is a span the same way we can put partial link partial uh, text and we can up, 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 up. that's what it's all about so here you put you copy right and then you put it in the notepad for example this text and then you go to your write a method write another method here that uh, let's say the name of the method will be i'm going to put it like this i'm going to copy and then verify Verify free trial is loaded, right? And then I'm just uh, verifying something. I do not, I'm not going to click on anything. So again, that is a span. And again, if you take a look here, guys, that is a span. And again, it will be a expression contains because that span has text and it has some other things. Is that correct? So I am going to put that particular text over there. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it here. So span contains text, you put it here. Okay, now if you execute, you will see that your code will not pass. Let me do the execution again one more time. Yes, can you repeat? What is that, Nabet? Can you repeat? Yeah, I'm recording. Yeah, everything is being recorded. Okay, now can you see it was not able to find this object? It will complain that, um, oh, I didn't call that method, right? Verify uh, trial loaded. I didn't call that. I'll have to call it from here. So empty hd obj dot right. Um, this. 
Now if you run it one more time. Okay, so here you will see that it will be failing. It is not able to. It is not able to highlight. It will that no such element. Can you see? No such element unable to uh, spend text. Sign up now to start your free trial. That text is not present. So what we'll have to do? We'll have to do something. So if you go to the method class, right here. Let me write another method. That method will be public void switch switch window. And in the switch window, what we are going to do? Um, some you create um. What is called um, window handles string? Okay, so here what we will have to do is um, switch window. If you you will have to create a, a collection of uh, window handles, right? So you will see that what we are going to do here. Um, let's say that for and then we put it this. And then here string st and then colon and your web driver is this my web driver my web driver dot get can you see this window handles and then what you do my web driver dot switch to switch to you put that window handle here I'll explain it I put that semicolon and then my web driver switch to now what we get it will be complaining remove argument switch to No, it is. Um, let me take a look. My web driver dot one second. So here, my web driver dot dot. So my web driver dot switch to dot window and then you have to put that argument here. Now if you ex I'll explain it, but let me call this method from here empty h p obj dot this okay now let me run it one more time if it works then i'm going to explain it in details
so it didn't it seems like it didn't work let me see now what it is complaining about no such element uh, span contains text comma sign up uh, now to start your free trial so let me see if i am switching to the window give me one second here system system dot how dot print ln put this st out there to see like if it is able to print that Print get window handles my web driver my web driver dot get window handles here that is correct and then before that we are clicking anything switch window okay now let me exit it one more time So over there, if I go there, let me see if it was able to, how many window handle we got, right? Test piece two, and then if I get the window handles, it will be printing the window handles here. So that means I didn't get the window handles, probably I'll have to wait here before i do this so let me put a thread dot slip five second thread dot slip slip and then thread dot slip and let me put a five second wait time here five second wait time here and then i'll have to here let me run one more time okay. Okay. another five second wait time now still i have a failure let me see if i have this window handles session full test case so here system out print ln right can you see that switch window and then the loop that i am executing get window handles my just switch window st it is not let me see where i have called this switch to test case to switch window oh oh so switch window will be it is not reaching there this is the problem right it is failing here and before so i'll have to switch first and then i have to verify this right otherwise i cannot that was the problem let me just execute it one more time i will keep my confidence that it will work this time yeah work so now so let me show you what is happening so when you are when you are opening another window then you have to switch your control to this window before you do anything how do you switch so before you switch you have to capture all of this well, for now for now you just know that this particular block of the code right can you see this you have to write 
if it opens a new window i will explain it more in the future you have to understand this this loop and stuff but before i explain this you will not understand this there are few things that i'll have to explain before that but for now when you are opening a new page you make sure that you write this particular block okay and then then you go to verify something from that page that verification right then you verify that so for now just make sure that you have this particular blo block to switch your window and then as i as i have called can you see i first switch and then i verified okay trial page is loaded okay so if i give you a summary information what i did in this particular block right can you see my web driver get window handles right so if i take out this and here let's say i'm saying spring str handles equal to this okay so what i'll have to do is basically um in order to do this right i'll have to put like this set and then this and then and then uh, what is my better than send this right and then right i will be using get a handles here and then i'll have to import can you see java util Util and there is another uh, yeah okay so what is happening here what you are doing can you see get my window handles so let's say this is a bigger let's say this is a whale in the sea or dolphin in the sea so what we are doing whatever windows we have opened here each of the window this window has a id number this window has a id number so we are so when we are saying my web driver dot got get window handles basically we are getting all of the window id and saving in this dolphin in the belly of this dolphin and then by for loop can you see this is the dolphin and it has lot of handles lot of window id in its belly we are taking one window handle at a time and putting it in that st small container so we are taking one window handle from this big container and putting it in the st and then we are switching it to the to that window and then after that so it will take the first window handle and then it will take the second window handle if you take a look at our log right can you see this is the window handle for the first window and this is the window handle for the second window so first it is switching to the first window and then it is switching to the next window so finally when it is switching to the next window we are on the second window our control is transferred to the second window and then what we were we, we want we can do that you got it what we did here so basically for now for switching window you will be copying and pasting this particular block of code in your screen if it opens a new window does it make sense now what what do you think okay got it so so here nahid bhai can you hear me okay so um so um do you have any question nahid bhai yeah that, that is like as i said this particular block we are capturing all of the windows their id and saving those ids into this variable and here 
from this collection of IDs, we are taking one ID at a time and putting it in that ST variable and then switching our control in this line to that particular window. So, one by one. yeah, one by one. And finally, yeah, so finally it will take the window handle for the last window and it will transfer the controls to the last window and then whatever you want you can do. So you do it by yourself and then come up with question. So that is why I said if you are not putting your time there, expect I'll be calling you. Okay, if you are not putting your time there, okay, how many hours you are spending from today, I am going to call you, hey, what is happening? Okay, and you practice these two test cases, make sure like this Salesforce is a complicated website. Like this is a, the Salesforce, this application, all over the world, big, big corporation, they use this Salesforce, big corporations. And it is a dynamic website, that's why I brought you here in this particular website, because that new tour is a straightforward website. You do not have so many things. I brought into the Salesforce so that you can practice more realistic thing. There are a lot of things to understand. Make sure that you practice. I have recorded it, right? You get it. You practice so that so that it all makes sense to you. So. Actually, I'm going to spend one hour on interview questions from the next session. Absolutely, absolutely. So that is what I'm going to do. So what you are, what you guys are going to do, basically, make sure that you are inputting time on this sheet. You are, make sure that you are able to uh, execute it. You are able to not only execute, you are able to explain it to me. Because if you do not explain it, you will not be able to explain it. You will not be able to explain it in real interview. So you will have to study, you will have to uh, be in a, in a stage so that you can explain it. And regarding the interview set one, so let me tell you something about the set one so that next week you have some clue like what you have to talk about. And you might have followed that this course is becoming intense. Okay. So the same way you you treat it, you have to spend time so that I know that all of us, we are adult, but still have to make sure that you are learning. So the video, I will probably not be able to make a video. I'll have to explain it in the session. So this, this, uh, these questions are self-explanatory, okay? So if you take a look, can you tell me about yourself? It is, I clearly said what you have to say, right? You have to just read it. You have to read it. You have to appreciate what it is being written here. This is really more of request than a question, but uh, these few words can put you on the spot in a way no question can. So the way you will be able to answering this, like you will be representing yourself in this, in this particular section, okay? So you may spend like a minute or two during the interview in this portion. So if you take a look here, right? For in the first section of this answer, it is a small answer. In the first section of the answer, you say, okay, what operating system you have used? Windows 10, Windows 7. Okay, then you say what kind of application you have tested up to this. You have tested .NET application, Ruby application, PHP application, right? These are the different like developers use, right? Java technology, .NET technology, PHP technology, right? I have tested application developed in Java, .NET, Ruby, PHP. These are the major, like the developers use this 
technology to develop the application. Right? These are this is okay. What is PHP? It is a web development language. Ruby, .NET, Java, all of these are all of these are technology that developers use. This is not our expertise. The developers use this technology to do to develop their software, right? As a QA person, I have written test plans, test cases, attended walkthrough meetings with the business analysts, project managers, business managers, and QA leads. Attended requirement review, like you, you understand what all of these things are, right? First, you say what, uh, what, um, what are what are the operating system you have used, and then you say what are the technology. Like what are the technology application you have tested and say as a QA person, then go in details as a QA person, what are the procedures you have done? And then then you come here, right? Attended a uh, walkthrough meeting and provided feedback to the business analyst. You did mobile application testing, manual testing, you did in the mobile application, right? And then I have worked in different databases like Oracle, MySQL, SQL, right? You have already worked on Oracle database. You have already, uh, you know, similar like MySQL, SQL, you have worked on those database, wrote queries, you have wrote queries. So in this particular, here you say about mobile application, in this particular case, you say about the backend testing, what kind of backend testing you have done. And then you come here, different kind of testing that you did black box testing white box testing integration testing regression testing you say about it right and then you have participated in uh, load testing and stress testing as well you mentioned that and then you come here in terms of tool right what kind of tool application lifecycle management jira bug jira tfs you have used right tfs is a tool like lm okay and then once like you say about something about defect here if you if you find a defect in the application right you have reported the defect and if the defect is fixed you have retested it and and then close the defect right if the defect is not fixed you have notified corresponding developer that the defect is not fixed so that they can take a look and in the meantime like to complete all of this process you have to do continuous communication with the developers. You have done automation, right? Using UFT, Selenium, right? You say this, and this is pretty much what I have done in my QA career. So, so here, um, the thing here is mobile application, basically you did manual testing. You have tested web applications, right? Clearly, you have tested in the mobile application, you have verified, uh, you know, you have verified functionality in the mobile application as well. Okay, so um, let me stop this recording and